years is a long time, but it doesn't even feel like that at all. All that's really changed are the bags under my eyes. I still remember when this thing had seven games on it, just seven. Now, according to the eShop, it has over 11,000. Holy hell. Every year on the anniversary of the Nintendo Switch, I like to do a video looking back on how the Switch has changed over the years and whether or not it's worth it to purchase for a newcomer. And every year, the answer is a resounding yes. But this year is a, a little bit different. It's still a resounding yes. I wouldn't give this thing up for the world. It literally changed my life. But I can't guarantee that it'll change your life. I can guarantee that you'll have some fun with a couple of games on here, but that's about it, sorry. The problem now is that there are two new consoles that are finally hitting their strides, plus a new competitor directly targeting Nintendo's portable market. And on a personal note, I've been kind of playing a lot of PC games and retro games on emulators. Luckily, the Nintendo Switch's fifth year is looking like it'll be its best year yet for Switch owners. The software lineup is stacked, and if you're thinking of getting one now, there's still five years of back catalog you absolutely have to play. So maybe you've looked into Switch ownership before and you weren't really into it. Well, I'm gonna talk about what changed over the years, how it stands right now, and what's to come in the predictable future. This video is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Hey, Bob, how's it? Ah! What? You look like you haven't slept in years. What? I slept, I just haven't had my coffee yet. <laughs> Probably didn't sleep good. What'd you say about my sleep? Calm down, man. Hey, man, it ain't worth it, man. Hey, I'm just saying, like, I don't know, change your mattress or something. My mattress? Stupid mattress sucks. Okay, you have a point. Yeah, well, I'm still gonna drink my coffee to get things going. Ah, that, that's the poop. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your door for free in the US. You need a mattress that is perfectly tailored for you. They made the sleep quiz to match your unique body type and sleep preferences. You could also take the sleep quiz with a partner so you don't have to fight over firmness. So based on my results, Helix matched me with a Dusk Lux. You ever sleep in a luxury hotel bed and you think like, I wonder what mattress they use? It feels like that. Okay, all right, let me, let me give it a try. Okay, it says I'm an I, and now an L, and now a lowercase b, and now it's just game over. What, let me, let me see. That's Snake. You're playing Snake. How did you even do that? If you're worried about the commitment, they have a 100 night sleep trial with a 10 year warranty. That's three months to make sure you love it. And if you don't, they'll pick it up for you and give you a full refund. So go to the link in the description below or go to helixsleep.com wolf for up to $100 off your Helix Sleep mattress, plus two free pillows. And again, it ships for free anywhere in the US. So how's the match? Ah! So lately, I don't think I've been playing most of my games on the Switch, which is kind of a departure from the norm for me. Now, if a game is multi-platform and performs relatively the same across all platforms, I'm gonna prefer it on the Switch still, just because of the convenience of being able to take it anywhere with me or just leave it docked at home. And no, I don't think the upcoming Steam Deck is gonna change that for me. That will be for different types of games, games that aren't gonna perform well on here, games that require a little more power. Lately, I've been playing games that just can't run on here. Now, I don't think the Switch's hardware is limiting its library just yet. I just think that maybe I'm burnt out on the games that are currently on here. Maybe I just don't even like video games anymore. Maybe I just like weird and wacky new hardware. That's why I play around with all these portable emulators or, or like the new consoles, playing them at uh, a really high resolution and frame rate, stuff like that. I spent like two hours the other day trying to get Valorant to run on my MacBook. It didn't work, but I had a lot of fun trying. 
Of course, that's not to say that I don't play my Switch anymore. I still dive in about once a week to play some Mario Maker or some Smash Brothers or whatever new game catches my eye. I mostly play my Switch in docked mode, so I don't even get to utilize its most useful feature. But I do really like the ability to be able to take my Switch out, the main Switch that I use, my main console, and bring it to and from the studio or to a friend's house and just dock it there and have all of my stuff ready to go. Other consoles like Xbox, for example, have fantastic account systems where you can just log into a different Xbox and have all of your stuff there ready to go. But then you need multiple Xboxes. And taking your main console, the one with all of your games and updates and save data and everything on it already, it, it just hits different, you know? This is not, however, a defense of Nintendo's abysmal account system. If you have multiple Switches, playing a game across more than one of them is a major pain in the ass. Save data frequently has conflicts. The auto download and upload doesn't quite work right. Only one of them will be able to play games without an internet connection, which defeats half of the purpose of even having a Switch in the first place. It's gotten slightly better over the years. It will attempt to automatically push through your cloud save, but it doesn't always do a good job. And there are still a lot of games that don't support cloud saves. Can you back up my Pokemon save? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, hold on. This software does not support backup via the data cloud service. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Even the newest Pokemon still doesn't support cloud saves. People will say this is to combat against save file spoofing. First of all, it's a single player only game. If anybody's spoofing a save file, who even cares? Second of all, no other console has this problem. My Xbox has all of my save files for all of my games across all of my Xboxes and even my PC, and I don't even have to touch anything. It does it all automatically. Maybe, I don't know, give me the option to just leave it all in the cloud if you're worried about spoofing. Then you can make sure that nobody's spoofing it. There's gotta be a way to fix this. It's 2022. Cloud saves was something that came included in Nintendo Switch Online subscriptions, which dropped in September of 2018, a little over a year after the Switch launched. So people who have been playing Mario Kart 8 online with friends and suddenly needed to start paying for the privilege were noticeably upset by this. That service launched with a pretty decent library of NES games, followed by an even better library of SNES games the year after. Just last year, to everyone's surprise, Nintendo added N64 and Sega Genesis games to the service. And there's some even better games there too. But it costs even more. It's an expansion pack to the current Nintendo Switch Online subscription. Not only does it give you those N64 games, but it also launched with the latest Animal Crossing DLC. It's also going to include the new Mario Kart DLC when that drops this month. I think it's safe to say whenever there's a new big DLC dropping for a first party Nintendo game, there's a good chance it'll end up on the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack. We can only hope that the library of DLC that you get with the expansion pack continues to grow, making Switch Online and the expansion pack a better value because Nintendo fans are still none too happy with the service. Nintendo is making strides to fix their N64 emulation that a lot of people complained about. I just wish that they added some button mapping to the app. Nintendo is also working on fixing their online infrastructure so that their net code for multiplayer games can run a little better. Because a lot of their previous games, like for example, Smash Brothers, runs like trash online, like a lot of the time, like an inexcusable amount of time. But it seems like a lot of their more recent games seem to run great. Even the Nintendo Switch Sports Online beta that happened like two weeks ago ran great for me after the first five minutes of hiccups. Oh, communication, communication error. Communication error has occurred. Okay, great. You... We... We got one too. the one Nintendo two. Switch Online experience. Okay, no, I don't. He's dead. I killed you, Tommy. You, you killed him. If I remember. Get out! Come on! Get, come on! Go again! Hit me, Tommy! Tommy, hit me! <laughs> you, Tommy! Okay. Oh my god, it's and this year, there are a ton of reasons to play your Switch. Nintendo Switch Sports is a big one for me. That's the most fun I've had playing a game all year. 
Don't ever oh. come. Don't ever come to Brooklyn. <laughs> Me? I will see you in the streets. Oh. Finish. Not me. Kirby comes out this month in his first 3D game ever. Mario Strikers is finally getting a new game since 2007. Splatoon 3, Bayonetta 3, New Zelda. All these huge games that have been highly anticipated for a while and are finally coming this year. We also just heard word of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And that's just the stuff to come. If you're completely new to the Switch, the back catalog is massive right now. Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey are still top of the Metacritic charts for Switch, even though they came out five years ago now. Right now, people are all wrapped up in Arceus, the Pokemon game people have been waiting for since the freaking GameCube. And there's Metroid Dread, the game Metroid fans have been waiting for since 2002. Personally, I've been spending most of my Nintendo Switch career playing Super Mario Maker 2 and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Two games that feel like they have a seemingly endless stream of content that I could just play forever. I also spent a lot of time last year playing Super Mario 64 on the Nintendo Switch Online app on here. Despite what everybody says about the emulation quality of this thing, Super Mario 64 runs awesome on here. Currently, I have this many games. It's about 700 gigabytes worth of games and counting. I'll admit, I've probably only played like a fraction of these. I, I have a problem. But my point is that there's a seemingly endless supply of phenomenal games that you'll never get tired of. Even though I just said in the beginning of the video that I got tired of them. I still dive into Mario Maker every once in a while on Smash Brothers, so I mean, I didn't really get tired of it. I just, there's a lot of other stuff on other consoles. Come on, I got a lot of, th I, I, this is my job. I do a lot of, I play a lot of different games. Valorant's really good. The only issue is that when the new Nintendo console inevitably comes out, I'm probably gonna lose all of the games that I have on here. They're probably gonna be stuck forever on my Switch. Nintendo used to be really good at backwards compatibility on their portable consoles. They've kind of lost that in this digital era. Being mostly digital has been mostly convenient in that I have all of my games with me wherever I am, all on my Switch but it becomes kind of a curse when you consider the 3DS and Wii U eShops closing or games suddenly leaving the eShop as publishers dissolve. That's why I have a big fat micro SD card. I wanna to try to keep everything on here to prepare for the inevitable storefront closures. The Nintendo Switch has gone through a lot of hardware iterations over the past five years. I have six of them here. You definitely don't need six of them. The first hardware iteration was improved battery life. I didn't get that one until the Animal Crossing Switch came out and then I used it for that handy boy that I made in the past video. Then there was the Switch Lite. I actually liked this hardware a lot, but I ended up not really using it that much because of Nintendo's horrible account system. But I did really love the form factor here. And then of course I had to get the Mario Red one. Now there's the OLED Switch. The screen really is a huge improvement, especially if you compare it to the past switches. And I like the dock a lot more. The ethernet port is probably more useful than an extra USB port. That's always been where I've had my ethernet dongle plugged into anyway. And it just looks nicer. Mine now has an Apple sticker on it and everybody thinks I like hacked it or something. No, I just put an Apple sticker on it because I think it looks funny. Every time this particular OLED switch of mine shows up in a video, I inevitably get some questions. This is the one that I've been running that OLED burn-in test on. I have a video on that. You could watch it over here if you haven't seen it already. I do finally have an update on that, but I'm gonna be saving it for another video. So I'm confident Switch users are gonna continue to love what they already have, and new users will be welcomed into a new world they've been missing out on. It seems like every single week, we get some new leaks or rumors of a new Nintendo Switch hardware coming down the pipeline. And as long as the sky is blue, you can bet your ass they're working on a new console. But the Switch's sales numbers have been breaking records every single month with no signs of slowing down. There would be no reason for them to release a new console anytime soon. If I had a guess, I'd be willing to bet you won't be seeing any new hardware to replace the current Switch for another year or two. Don't let that be the excuse that keeps you from playing this awesome library of stuff. Sure, there's a lot to be critical about, and a lot that I hope Nintendo fixes soon, but that's nothing compared to the incredible games that are already there, and the great times I've had. 
when I said this thing changed my life, I, that wasn't a hyperbole or anything. I'm not just that big of a Nintendo fanboy, although I guess I am, because covering this thing before launch and during the launch really made this YouTube channel take off, and it made me become a full-time YouTuber, and it changed my career. So I'm very grateful for it. But of course, I'm going to have my opinions. And I don't plan on covering it forever. Eventually, I will get too old for this shit. But also, this channel has always just been about whatever I'm interested in in that moment. Right now, I'm interested in the Nintendo Switch, but you also see some videos here about PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, these weird wacky emulators and stuff. So you're gonna keep seeing stuff like that. And I thank you guys very much for being along for the ride with me. And if you're watching this because you're thinking about getting one of these, I welcome you to join the rest of the ride. Anyway, what do you guys think about the Nintendo Switch being five years old? Does that make you feel old like it does me? Has it fulfilled everything you've wanted so far or is there more stuff you want them to do to make your experience a little bit better? Leave it in the comments below, at me on Twitter or any and all of this other social media garbage. Hey, thank you Helix for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out if you're in the market for their new mattress. And of course, the most important things that you can do to help support this channel is just subscribe right here. You wanna turn that notification bell on if you wanna hear more about this particular OLED switch. Of course, you could also share this video with a friend a friend who is maybe thinking about getting one of these things and wants to know a little bit more information. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good week. <laughs> Take my coffee with me.